spotlighting Hawaii's leaders. We want to bring in Governor David E. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. Lieutenant Governor, good morning. Thanks so much for joining us. Mayor Derek Kawakami. Thank you so much, uh, Senator, for being here. Spotlighting the issues. Where is the virus right now in our community? How much is this overall going to cost the state? How are you responding to the community's concerns? Talk about the level of citations that you guys are writing. Spotlight Hawaii with Yanji Denise and Ryan Kalei Suji on the digital platforms of the Honolulu Star Advertiser. This episode of Spotlight Hawaii is brought to you by Chaminade University. Happy Aloha Friday. Welcome to Spotlight Hawaii. I'm Yanji Denise. Ryan Kalei Suji is not with us this morning. He's working. Uh, but we, of course, continue on with a very important conversation. We are joined this morning by Lieutenant Governor Josh Green. He is just back from a trip to the mainland. Welcome back. And your background is different this morning because you are working from home. Yes. And my, my sound is a little different. I'm hearing some muffled sound from you there. Uh, but uh, I, yes, I'm just back and I'm great, grateful to be back. It was important to, to speak nationally on health care considerations and disparities and to see what's going on in the mainland also. Are you hearing me okay, Yenji? You're I good hear there? you just fine and hopefully your audio catches up as well. Can you hear me? Yeah, I, yours, your voice sounds very strangely distorted, but that's okay. I, <laughs> um, well, um, we will muddle yes. through um, and, and talk a little bit about why you're working from home. You are the acting governor today. Shouldn't you be at the state capitol? Could, uh, could you say that one more time? I'm sorry. Uh, I said you are the acting governor right now, but you're not at the state capitol. Tell us a little bit more about that. I'm, I'm really sorry. I'm, I'm not getting, I'm getting a distorted feed from you. And okay. I- Okay. Do you want to lose, sorry to our audience this morning, do you want to lose the earbuds maybe? Would that help? Maybe doing that way? Uh, I... You might need to text me questions or something, but uh, <laughs> all, all I can tell you is, uh, let me start in and we'll try to figure this out. Uh, we're doing, I'll speak about COVID a little bit briefly until I can, you know, until I can get the sound better, but we've done well. And we've now vaccinated a, a ton of our people. 72% of our people are fully vaccinated and 88.3 percent of our population has at least initiated five and up so that's important i'm gonna take these if that helps a little bit um but what that has meant is that our our case counts have dropped we're at 100 per day and much of the mainland is suffering they're seeing uh some spikes they're seeing spikes in europe they're seeing spikes in certain cities and we shouldn't be subjected to that if we continue to do this well but there are reports of other challenges like the fatalities I know we talked about mentioning that a little bit before. Uh, we've had 120 fatalities reported in the last 30 days and 190 in the 30 days prior to that. This is a reflection of the surge that we had in early September, where we went up to 448 people in the hospital, which was on September 3rd. That's when that peaked. And that was very difficult. So it's coming down. And a lot of times doctors and, and teams across the state have to go slow in reporting because they want to get it right. They have to be respectful to the family. But actually the fatalities are dropping overall uh, significantly in the last uh, four to six weeks. It's just the reporting that has to catch up. And Hawaii will continue to lead. We have the second lowest mortality rate and the second lowest overall rate of COVID in the country because of people's sacrifice. So I'm grateful for that. And we're down to 46 people in the hospital as of today. First time we've been that low since I believe July 12th. Well, that is good news. And hopefully, uh, how's my audio? Can you hear me now? Still not, huh? Oh my goodness. I can't hear a thing. I'm so sorry. Um, can you try one more time with those earbuds? And I apologize to our audience. Um, hopefully that clicks in and you can hear me now because I got you. Do you have us? Try again. Hello, hello. It, I can hear a little bit, but I'm going to be somewhat guessing at what you're asking. Uh, <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, I want to uh, bring in some questions. So let's bring in questions. Here's one for she from Chef Chai. He says, is proof of negative, uh, you know, COVID case and a proof of vac fully vaccination card should be enough for the restaurants. Why are there still restrictions? What's your thought on the current restrictions right now? It should be enough. Absolutely. I think restrictions need to be backed out of and people have done so well that it's important we reward them for their sacrifice of getting vaccinated. Uh, and so frankly, if people are vaccinated, I think we should drop down the restrictions, even the six foot restrictions now, because it's safe when you're vaccinated to go into places like that. And certainly all outdoor restrictions should be 
uh, quickly removed because outdoor is the place we want people to be, whether it's a Thanksgiving party, Christmas party, or what have you. Uh, and now we're vaccinating additionally children ages five to 11. We have 119,000 kids. My son Sam got vaccinated the other day without difficulty. I respect people if they make a different choice, but our pediatrician who you should lean on, your pediatrician said it was safe. So that's the way we get back toward normal. We, we normalize restaurants. We normalize the football games, which we fought for together, those kind of things. So I'm really, I'm really glad that we're moving that direction, but sometimes it's not quite fast enough for people, and I, I get that. And how soon do you think that restrictions can be further lifted? Uh, they should be removed based on the science, and that is very important. The science says that we have the second lowest or the lowest rate of COVID, and that means they should, every three weeks, two to three weeks, we should lower the restrictions. I really support Mayor Blangiardi's position to do that. Uh, he proposed something uh, for, you know, it was November 4th, I believe, or November 3rd, and then November 24th. And that's the way to incrementally come down when we see a two to three week cycle of the virus. You know, the, um, the positivity rates at 1.71% right now, the national positivity rates 5.2%, so much higher. And we are in a luxurious position because we have so many people vaccinated as compared to those in the mainland. And to tell you the truth, when I did take the opportunity to speak at a conference, visit my mom and then come back, I saw these other cities and what they were dealing with and they, they're kind of over it. Uh, I am worried that they will have a surge in the winter, so we should be careful if people are unvaccinated, of course, but we're in about the best possible situation in the country. So backing down the restrictions makes sense. The ones that I would say are more sensible to keep, at least for now, are masks indoors, especially if those people are unvaccinated, and also the travel restrictions. We should probably keep some of that travel restriction really just to say people have to be tested or vaccinated. Uh, because we kept people coming from east and west now that international travel's begun. Uh, on the mask question, how long do you think we will be wearing masks? Uh, say that one more time or type it. How should we be? How, lo how much longer do you think we will be wearing masks? Oh, yes. How much longer will we be wearing masks? At least through January 1, I would believe. Uh, I'd like to start the, the year fresh, kind of. It's a sense of renewal when we hit January and the new year. As long as our case counts and our hospital counts have stayed controlled and we have not seen a surge over the Christmas holidays, which we've seen before, that's the time where that discussion should be quite vibrant. People should be smart under any circumstance. I hear a lot of people saying they're going to wear masks indoors, whether they're vaccinated or not, if they have health conditions, if they're concerned, that'll be their personal choice. But I think that from a government standpoint, we probably should back away from the emergency proclamation. I think that's been in the news recently. I respect the legislature and their desire to, you know, have us move away from emergency proclamations, get more input from people. And I think people are pretty smart now. We've dealt with this pandemic for over 20 months. And if you are not vaccinated and you're not wearing a mask, you're making your own choices about risk. And everyone else has already done a pretty good job protecting themselves and their family uh, to the other side of that debate. Okay, I want to bring in another audience question. Uh, are restrictions ever going to be lifted or will it always be vaccinated only? This uh, writer says that his wife had a COVID shot and just got had COVID, just got vaccinated and now is pain, in pain worse than when they actually had the virus. She can barely move since the shot. Uh, we know that that does happen to some people, though it is temporary and then you recover. Uh, do we all need to suffer this if we have natural immunity? What do you say to this uh, viewer today? I think she makes a very good point. I, you know, one of the considerations that I've asked the Department of Health to make is, yes, we've got, you know, we're moving toward like 85 to 88% of all of our people will be fully vaccinated. That's where we will end up. And the other 12 to 15% of the people will have had COVID and have natural immunity. Now you do get more immunity when you get the shots. I, I need to be clear about that as a physician, uh, but some people have side effects and some people just have concern. And I think we should be counting their COVID experience that they had as uh, protection and it should clear them from some of the uh, restrictions. I think that's perfectly reasonable and that person makes a reasonable point. That's the way I would choose to govern um, if the decision were simply mine to make. Uh, we have to come back together as a, a community. I know that there was some angst over mandates. That wasn't really my policy per se, but I have been promoting vaccination and some of these rules that the mayors have come up with. We have to come back together because we have to live together and we are protecting one another now through our actions and also the case counts have been utterly low so all of those things mean that 
we should be able to drop restrictions and respect that that gentleman and his wife who have their immunity from COVID. Talk a little bit about the shots for five to 11 year olds. How is that going? Uh, are enough children getting the vaccine for that to make an impact on our cases? It's going very well. You're speaking about the age five to 11, right? So, uh, well, we have 119,000 keiki in our state, one of whom is my son, Sam, who I love that dude, you can be sure. And they are getting vaccinated. They're, we're about 4% now of that population, age five to 11 have received their first shot. That's 5,000 kids. And they're, I assume, going to vaccinate to about 50%. The group that is older than them, 12 to 17 adolescents, they're now vaccinated. I believe it's up to 77% uh, as far as a population, but slightly fewer, I think, of the young kids will. This is the way my pediatrician put it to us for the 5 to 11s. It's a much smaller dose. It's only uh, 30% of the dose that we give to adults. They're having far less side effects and discomfort even at the vaccination site. But it's enough to introduce that awareness to the immune system to fight uh, against a potential infection, to build antibodies. So we're doing very well. But parents, like my family, we're a little bit more careful with our younger kids always. I would say that the vaccine has been utterly safe um, with very few exceptions across the board, whether it's Pfizer or Moderna or Johnson Johnson. But I'm also a dad and we know we worry. Uh, kids have tended not to get very sick. They've been hospitalized much less than 1% of those who caught COVID as opposed to closer to 7%, six to 7% of all adults. So that's something also to consider, but children who catch COVID can spread COVID to their parents or to their teachers or to the staff at the schools. They're 8.5% of the population, this group, that's five to 11. So that's one of the reasons we continue to also promote it. Do you think that the five to 11 year olds should be included in these vaccine verification programs like the Safe Access Oahu or like the plan, the, the requirements on Maui? Uh, I might need to have you type that again. You said, do you think we'll ever have to include? Forgive me. Do you think that the five to 11 year olds should be included in the vaccine verification requirements for Safe Access Oahu and, and Maui, the safer outside? I'm sorry, I, I might have to pass on that question only because I couldn't hear it. Okay, uh, if someone well, types it in the queue, we'll, I'll, we'll go to I'll the next one. And, and, and thank you for all of you who are writing questions right now. Please type as many as you can, because as you can see, we're having some audio issues with the Lieutenant Governor, but we still want to power through. Let's get to Amy's question here. What will the state do should the numbers arise? You know, should they go up again? What are the plans? Yes. Okay. So if the numbers rise, uh, then we take a half step back, but not a full step back. That's what we would have to do. But the numbers won't rise so significantly that we go to a place where we were at uh, near capacity in our hospitals. As you know, uh, the hospital footprint or the healthcare footprint is somewhat limited in Hawaii. And in order to deal with the last surge, we had to contract with 650 critical care nurses and other professionals. That was uh, life-saving by Healthcare Association of Hawaii folks, Hilton Rathel, Department of Health. But right now, at, with 46 people in the hospital total, that's down 90% or 89% from our peak at 448. And I'll tell you, we have the capacity, if you look at all of our hospitals, to care for 710 individuals with COVID. So we would not want to make any significant adjustments. We want to instead heal ourselves from a psychological standpoint, to come down off of the, the peaks of COVID where our lives were very um, limited in gathering. We want to come off of what has been very difficult for us to survive economically, where at 1.200,000 individuals were food insecure and had to seek food support from the wonderful people at the food bank and, and Salvation Army and so on. So we do not want to ever have to add restrictions again. That's the benefit of having 80, well, let's go through these numbers again, 72% um, fully vaccinated in our state, 83.2% of, of our whole state is at least one shot, and 88.3% of all five-year-olds and up have had at least one shot. That's a lot of immunity. That's uh, 1,182,774 people have at least gotten a shot out of the eligible 1.34 million right now. So we shouldn't have to go back to restrictions. We shouldn't have to go backwards unless we get a very unlucky break, like a large variant breaks loose that is not protected against by the vaccine. And that's usually three to five years out before anything like that happens. And we will now have a lot of immunity against coronaviruses because of not only the shots, but also the booster. Okay, I typed in my question here. So should kids five to 11 be included in the vaccine verification programs? I think it's probably overkill, honestly. You know, if, if five to 11 year olds want to go to a restaurant 
and their parents are fully protected and they're not symptomatic, I just don't want to overthink it. I probably would pull back uh, from that. I, I think, again, we have to honor the fact that a lot of these individuals have suffered uh, at their workplace. They've been unable to employ individuals who are just barely surviving because we have so many restrictions. And so now that we are in a place where we're safe, where our hospitals are safely at lower numbers, we just really should not be adding any restrictions. In fact, we should probably be pulling back. There, there was seemingly a commitment to actually move away from any of the safe access restrictions at kind of a date uh, out into the future. And I would like to see that right after the holidays happen because I know we're being careful and we're starting some big events. We're now gonna have concerts. These things are excellent. But sooner or later, we just have to live with the fact that we are a vaccinated population with also a lot of natural immunity against this disease. It took two full years essentially to, to have mankind develop a lot of immunity. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing pockets of trouble in parts of Europe where they're under vaccinated in Africa and even across the US mainland. We don't wanna see that here, but that's why it's such a benefit to be the, the most highly vaccinated state in the country or in the top three consistently. I don't think any state has had as many people initiate. A couple states have had a few more people fully complete the vaccination. Okay, I want to get to Kauai now. All counties seem to be doing great, except for Kauai, which has seen a 36% increase in cases over the last two weeks. What's happening over there? So what's happening there is, uh, it's, it's kind of ironic, but because Kauai was so successful in the beginning of keeping everybody out and, you know, and doing a great job protecting against any breakouts, their immunity also did not increase, which you do develop a significant amount of immunity in the population from people actually catching COVID. And so maybe a few months behind where, remember, there was a big surge on, on the Big Island in Hilo. And then there was a big surge on Oahu where the positivity rates jumped up two or three percentage points. Uh, Six percent positivity rate is much higher than the state average at 1.7 percent. I think you put that number up there. But that's what's basically happening. Yet Kauai still is doing great. There's extremely few people in the hospital, thank goodness. We've seen very few fatalities. And so, you know, I commend their administration for all the hard work and all the people that have put hard work into this. You are going to see occasional outbreaks, especially in areas where the vaccination rate is lower. And when you go to very rural communities, like the community where I was a physician in Kau, I'm on call this weekend on Big Island again, but up in the north, that's where you'll see little pockets of outbreaks. And that usually drives those numbers up a little. Okay. I want to bring in Anne's question here. She says, with the vast majority of the world unvaccinated, is it irresponsible to remove mandates, specifically talking about masks? Well, the vast, vast majority of the world may be unvaccinated, but the vast majority of Hawaii is vaccinated. And that's what we're focused on. Uh, we're focused on being a responsible population here. Uh, also, we are going to keep some of those uh, restrictions and mandates on travel in place. In other words, if an unvaccinated part of the world wants to travel to Hawaii, they will have to be both vaccinated if it's international travel and pre-tested. And of course, the Safe Travels program, which my team, my team put together beginning last October 15th and, and going right now through the present, uh, requires, first it was requiring vac uh, full testing with the nucleic acid amplification test, the gold standard. And then when the vaccination came on, we gave that option to be respectful to people. That still will stay in place. That's the one thing I would expect to stay in place for quite some time into 2022. It just makes sense for us because you, we've got travelers both from the East in Japan, Tokyo, China, Philippines, and of course, from the West, uh, California, New York, the rest of the mainland. We, we wanna be careful. And I also want to respect the sacrifice that our own people made and not see outbreaks. Uh, I do also like to remind people that only one to 2% of all of our cases came from uh, mainland travelers, vacation travelers. And it was a much larger percentage of our cases that were outbreak related if we didn't have full vaccination amongst our own people. That's really not the case of, uh, anymore, but we have to do boosters to keep up with this. And I'll keep watching this day over day, week over week to make sure that we don't let our guard down. Uh, but it is a good position to be in. When a state like Hawaii has done this much to protect itself, even if a traveler came through with COVID, they may get sick, we will take care of them, but they're not likely to make any of our people sick. And that's usually my primary focus. Okay. Uh, are you expecting an increase in case counts around the holidays? What should we be comfortable with? Because we know when people gather, there can be more cases. 
Well, I'm never comfortable with even one case, of course, because the discomfort is some family suffering or I'm caring for them in the hospital. But I, first of all, I don't expect significant increases in cases uh, because I think actually we are less and less likely to see large numbers of cases given how many people are getting their boosters and vaccinations done. Uh, what am I comfortable with? I'm comfortable with whatever we can manage in a sane way in the hospital because most people are going to have, if they catch COVID, very minimal disease now that they're vaccinated. I'm believe me, I'm very comfortable with people having colds and flu if they're not too sick, staying home for a couple of days, hydrating, getting better. What I'm uncomfortable with is individuals getting critically ill and ending up on a ventilator or worse. If you're vaccinated, you're not going to get that terribly ill. That's been the, the beauty of the vaccinations. Even if you catch COVID, you end up having a very um, modest illness. And that's why you know, like somewhere between 95 and 98% of all the fatalities, tragically, have been amongst people who had no immunity, no vaccination. Everyone who got vaccinated was able to survive it. So that's why my comfort level is much higher right now as we head into the holiday season. But would I like to see cases in the low double digits? You bet. Was I expecting to get down to 46 uh, under the hospital? I actually thought it would be under 50 by the 15th of November. So that has happened exactly according to expectations. And that means our doctors, nurses, caregivers can manage the disease, even if the cases go up later in the winter. Okay. What are you advising people when it does come to holiday gatherings? What do you think is safe for Christmas and Thanksgiving? Can we gather as we have in years past? Well, my primary advice is be in a loving situation with your family and restore that kind of health, the psychological health, the important bonding again. My additional advice is if you're unvaccinated um, or vulnerable, wear a mask when you're in your family gathering. I would also advise people to eat a lot of wonderful foods and junk foods and exercise more because that's what life is about over Thanksgiving and Christmas. You know, go for that extra walk outdoors with your, your uh, children or your husband or your wife or your aunties. Walk off the uh, extra mashed potatoes and gravy and poi and everything that we eat. But um, be together, enjoy the holidays, restore normalcy to the best of your ability uh, because gatherings are very safe outdoors and indoors. If you're vaccinated, they're quite safe. So you can have a, a dinner with your extended family. You can have a, um, you know, you can have a lot of people together, especially if you're outdoors. And honestly, the, I know the restrictions have, the numbers haven't been lifted yet, but they should be soon. We could have larger gatherings very safely as long as people are vaccinated. We should be having all weddings restored and events restored like um, the mayor has been doing. Uh, and that would also include gatherings like our family members. I know a lot of a lot of years we have 20 or 30 people historically with our family getting together over Thanksgiving. It's really not risky if you're vaccinated, but let's try to follow the rules. We've been going through them methodically and I, I, I know they drive people a little crazy. I'm right there with you. You know, I'm, I'm also feeling it because I want to have those big gatherings again. The best part is Hawaii has so outstripped the results of every other state except for two or three that we'll be thankful for this after um, the holidays and this whole pandemic ends. Okay, hold on just one. I, <laughs> I want to uh, type in this question here because I know we're having these audio issues. So I'm just going to uh, put that in there. Uh, so I just want to be clear here. If everyone is vaccinated, you're saying that restrictions should essentially be, li be lifted. But there are some questions in the comments here. What about concerns over waning immunity? Not everyone has gotten a booster. Yes. So I would say this, when, when we get to where we're going, which is 85 to 88% full vaccination status in our state, yes, all restrictions should be lifted because we will have a lot of inherent uh, immunity. Even if immunity wanes some, you still do retain a lot of antibody response anyway. Your immune system doesn't totally forget what it was dealing with, but we'll be watching for variants. We'll be ready to do boosters quite quickly, especially if any variant is very different. And I think that as we boost uh, the vaccination, in this case, it means a third shot for people who had Pfizer or Moderna and a second shot just after two months, someone at Johnson & Johnson, they're going to get all of that full immunity. Uh, but I do think that that is when you get rid of all restrictions. Keep in mind that almost every state has removed all their restrictions long before us, and they're doing infinitely worse than us. Uh, they do struggle in some states. Some states have a small medical footprint, healthcare footprint, like Idaho and other states and they did get crushed in their hospitals. I don't want to ever see that happen to us. But 
they are far behind us as far as vaccination rates and safety goes. We're in a pretty safe place. I'm not prepared to, to declare an end to the pandemic, of course, but the virus is becoming endemic. In other words, it's being controlled now better than ever uh, over the last many months. And it also means that we have to, at the same time, return to what matters in life and what makes sense. You cannot live uh, under a cloud of fear forever. Uh, it was something we had to watch carefully for because my team predicted in the first year, if we didn't take action, we'd have 4,479 fatalities. That was the model and 9,000 fatalities over two years. Uh, instead, we've able, been able to keep it you know, under 1,000 so far, and it'll probably be about 85% to 90% below the national average. That was worth doing, but it does not mean that in 22, 23, 24, that we have to live under this um, this shadow of a virus. So, you know, I want to reward people personally and thank people personally for all the sacrifices they've made, but we can move away from these restrictions. And we're a nimble society. We can add and adjust slight, uh, slightly if we develop new concerns, but we're pretty safe right now. And it's because people have gotten vaccinated because they'll get their kids are getting vaccinated. It's because we've been pretty diligent about mask wearing most of the time. So all of these things are to the credit of the people across our state. Okay. And Heidi's saying, just for a clarification, by all restrictions, do you mean mask man mandates indoors as well? Well, once, yes, once that'll be the last restriction to go, uh, masks indoors. And that shouldn't happen just yet because we are observing what's going on in Europe and in a couple of our states across the country where there have been extra cases. Uh, but yes, at some point, mask restrictions indoors, especially for those who are vaccinated, are not going to be necessary. If you're vaccinated, look, I'm indoor right now. I happen to be sitting in my home because I just came back from the mainland. And the rule is you can't, if you're a state worker, go back to the office for three days. So I'm, I'm coming to you from the green kitchen. But um, yes, if I were at the office and all the people were vaccinated, there would be very little risk. And that's the time where as our case counts drop and our immunity goes up, we won't need to have uh, masks on. But let's be smart about it. If someone is around uh, other people and they have an immune problem or someone's got some severe ailment that puts them at risk, let's protect them. At least until we start seeing very low positivity rates of COVID. So that will be the last restriction to go. Uh, I would say the second to last restriction will be the travel restrictions. Will probably be the second to last restriction to go because we're mindful of what's going on in the mainland. But most of our restrictions have actually been lifted if you look at it as compared to three or four months ago, which is something that I'm grateful for. Okay, I wanna bring in uh, just a few more and then I'm gonna let you go because I know these audio issues are tough. But uh, Anne-Marie Medeiros is saying, the Delta variant seemed to take Hawaii leaders by surprise even though it marched around the planet. How are we prepared for what's next? Well, yeah, when the Delta variant came, we were at 66% fully vaccinated uh, and we we're about 75% partially vaccinated. We're, you know, five to 10% better now. And then a lot of people caught COVID and now have immunity. It was evident to me that there was going to be spread for, you know, for COVID, unfortunately, for the Delta variant, especially amongst those who were completely unvaccinated. And that's who caught it. Uh, if another variant comes, once again, it's going to get the people who never got immune from a vaccination. You do get some protection from your natural immunity when you have caught COVID, but you get five to 10 times more if you go and get the shots. So I don't know what to tell you. I, I don't want to bore people to death about this, but go get vaccinated. It's like the basic thing. Get vaccinated so you don't get polio. Get vaccinated so you don't get meningitis. Get vaccinated so you don't get pneumonia. Get vaccinated so you don't catch COVID. I, I saw a lot of sick people uh, over the last year. And I, you know, I love everybody who's vaccinated or unvaccinated, as you know, in our state, but I worry about those. The next variant, uh, which there will be other variants, will be less impactful because people endured having COVID, even if they were unvaccinated back in July, August, September. Tens of thousands of people caught COVID, many of whom we probably never even tested positive because they just laid low at home and weren't too sick. I can tell you though, the 5,000 or so people that were hospitalized is an accurate count. And tragically, of course, the 971 individuals that passed away is also an accurate count. So just be smart, everybody, and look at this pandemic like any other. It's something that we can prevent if we are careful about what we do. And you can make deliberate decisions, whether you're pro or against vaccination, you can make good deliberate decisions to be safe. 
You know, you spoke about this virus going from a pandemic to being endemic. George White has uh, a little bit of pushback here this morning saying the WHO and local experts have made crystal clear that anybody who predicts the pandemic is POW or endemic is pretending, lying or foolish. Why are you right and the experts wrong? Well, I, I haven't predicted that it's over, but the state of Hawaii, it is endemic if you look at where it is right now. I mean, we are ta we're talking about there's only 1,455 active cases at this moment out of uh, 1.4 million people. Uh, those numbers are accurate and they don't lie. And the number of people that are vaccinated uh, in our country, I'm sorry, forgive me, in our state are profoundly higher than in areas where they're referring to the World Health Organization and others of, you know, there are parts of the world where it's only two to 3% vaccination. So yes, they're very vulnerable and we will be mindful of that. But, um, you know, I, I, I don't, um, I don't play this game where people suggest it's I'm ever making any kind of foolish assertions. I'm being very straight with people as a doctor first and then as lieutenant governor second. And I can tell you that we have come to a place that's much safer than any other state that I visited, any other group that I've spoken with. Uh, we have, you know, the upper hand, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't be smart and continue to watch what this virus does or doesn't do, whether it changes. It's really important that we are sober about this, that we don't point fingers uh, we're in a great spot. If the World Health Organization was to reach out to any individual who has doubts about Hawaii's uh, response, they will hear from the World Health Organization how extraordinary our people have behaved and what our response has done, which is to save 85% 85, 85 plus of the fatalities that would have occurred. We prevented hundreds of thousands of cases of COVID through our vaccination program. It's a good thing. So, you know, I want to make sure we end on positive notes and uh, though some people will disagree about what has gone on, and I do think we have to return to normal, uh, we should respect one another as we go through the end of this, uh, this phase of the pandemic. It will be around. It'll be around the globe. I think there will be an international set of initiatives to make sure we vaccinate others in other countries for their own good. I've worked on medical missions many times in Africa, in Samoa and other places. Um, but I, I believe that we're going to have to support other parts of the, of the world to both protect them and to protect us against a resurgence of COVID. But the people of Hawaii should be very proud of their response. They've done more than any other state that I know of to protect their loved ones and to do the right thing based on science. And the, the people who are uh, of a different opinion, I also realize that they're doing what they can to prevent spread and prevent catching COVID in their own ways. So let's keep doing that. But as we go into the holidays, it's time to support one another and to kind of restore our sense of aloha for one another. That's important because there were some bumpy times some choppy times during the COVID pandemic. Uh, but I'm grateful to be able to communicate. I'm sorry about those, this tech challenges. When I get back to regular, when I can go back to the state Capitol on Monday, I think my sound will be better um, as opposed to in my kitchen, but I care about you guys. And I I'm grateful that we got to talk about COVID today. Okay. Well, Lieutenant Governor Josh Green joining us fresh off the heels of his trip from his kitchen. Uh, we do appreciate your time this morning and thank you for muddling through the technical difficulties. Aloha. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you to all of you who are watching this morning and who are helping out typing in your questions and joining this conversation. Uh, very interesting to hear from the Lieutenant Governor. You heard a lot of optimism there. Uh, he's saying that he, you know, he supports having full Christmas holidays, Thanksgiving holidays, gathering with loved ones, of course, outdoors being safer than indoors. Again, pushing for folks to get vaccinated, if at all possible, um, saying that vaccinations in the pediatric set, those five to 11 who just started to be able to have access to the vaccine, do seem to be going well um, and that hospitalizations have gone down. There's a big article that we would encourage you to read today in the paper about that death toll. Um, you know, we see these case counts reducing for the most part, but a steady drumbeat of death uh, in our community, which is just so difficult and so sad to process all those numbers. Uh, there's a, a great article in the paper today that really puts those uh, deaths into context so that we can try to understand why the case counts seem to be going down, but the death tolls just seem to be continuing. So please do read that. Uh, we appreciate all of you being here. 
Ryan is back here on Monday, and that, of course, helps with a lot of the technical issues. Uh, David Lassner from University of Hawaii, the president of UH, will be joining us on Monday. And then Colleen Hanabusa, the chair of the Heart Board, will be joining us here on Wednesday. So we look forward to next week, another great week of conversations. Thank you for sticking with us, and we'll see you right back here Monday at 1030. Aloha. This episode of Spotlight Hawaii was brought to you by Chaminade University.